NASA's explorers are readying up for a road trip. First, through the desert of northern Arizona, and later, worlds beyond our own. We'll take you along for the ride on the Lunar Electric Rover, next on Real World. NASA has big plans to explore worlds beyond our own someday. And in order to make those plans reality, they have already started developing and testing many of the tools that will make it happen. One such tool is a major mode of transportation and exploration that can be used on the moon, Mars, an asteroid, or other places in our universe. It's the LER, the Lunar Electric Rover, and NASA is kicking the tires and taking it for a test drive. So the LER is a concept that we came up with to optimize human safety and efficiency while doing planetary exploration. Mike Gernhardt is an astronaut and the LER project manager. We have two astronauts in each one, and we go out for long traverses up to possibly up to 1,000 kilometers in two weeks or longer at a time. The LER is kind of like an RV your family might explore our world in. But instead of going to the Grand Canyon, NASA astronauts will explore canyons on the moon or Mars. And the LER is built to do a few things this RV can't. So it's fly by wire, so you have a joystick, and it goes forward, sideways, reverse, or yaw, and you can combine all of those maneuvers in any combination you want. So, for example, we can go crabbing around a, a crater or a rock, and it really optimizes your ability to make observations. This is one of the monitors on board the LER. The markings on this dial are the same as you would find on a protractor. A protractor allows you to measure angles. The LER is designed to turn at acute angles. An acute angle is any angle less than 90 degrees. The small turning radius gives the LER flexibility in its movements, allowing the vehicle to turn in very tight circles. This thing has an electronic transmission. And we've got park neutral, low and high. And when we're off-road like this, we stay in the low gear. Top speed is 15 kilometers per hour, which is just under 10 miles per hour. Which might not seem like much to someone like you, used to cruising the interstate at 100 kilometers per hour. But compare the LERs to the rovers exploring the moon, which travel just 40 meters per day. It would take the Mars rovers 24 years to cover the same distance LER travels in a day. That moves exploration to the fast track. The cool thing is all the visibility we have out the lower part for like observing the rocks and stuff. And then that helmet bubble, you can actually lay down there and put your head in that bubble. And I can drive that within about an inch or two of any rock that you're interested in. That's actually closer that you can really get your helmet on a suit without right. falling down. And because the astronauts can sleep in it, it allows for much more exploration in a shorter amount of time. And then instead of having to come home every night to a uh, hab or your lander, you can sleep in the vehicle and keep going. And that allows us you know, much more efficiency on the exploration operations. And it's very relevant to the Mars Forward work, where when we go to Mars, we want to have some mobility. Uh, it's like if you landed here on Earth in the middle of West Texas, and you can only go 10 kilometers different view of the Earth than if you could travel hundreds of This is a major advancement over rovers used during the Apollo mission. Back then, astronauts could only go as far as 10 kilometers, which is how far they could walk in their spacesuits back to the lander in the event of a rover breakdown. With a pressurized LER, astronauts can go almost 250 kilometers. That's 25 times the exploration power as compared to Apollo. And since NASA plans to employ two LERs for each mission, it makes exploration even safer for astronauts. And if one of the rovers fails, all four crew can get in the other one and come home. So we have built-in redundancy on the way out. In August and September 2009, NASA sent LER to the northern deserts of Arizona to do a mission similar to one astronauts would conduct on the moon. LER was the centerpiece at this event, known as Desert Rats research and technology studies. The idea was to put LER to the test, running a mission with two astronauts running from base camp hundreds of kilometers into the desert and back again. 
doing various activities analogous to the kinds of things astronauts would have to do on the moon or Mars. Each day, the astronauts did three to four short walks out of the rover, similar to the extravehicular activities or EVAs they would do on the surface of the moon or another planet. On the back of the vehicle, we have what we call suit ports. And you can think of these as stepped-in spacesuits. And we basically just open a hatch inside the vehicle, we open the back hatch of the suit, and then we step in the suit. We have electric actuators that close all these things up. We do leak checks, and literally 10 minutes later, we're boots on the surface of the moon. So that's a huge breakthrough. That allows us to do the short spacewalk. Compare that to EVAs on the space station, where it takes six hours or longer to get out. So for a two-hour spacewalk, astronauts have to spend eight hours in the spacesuit. It really kind of beats you up because it's stiff as a board. But if you do, you know, half an hour in, an hour out, half an hour in, you know, short EVAs, it, it doesn't have that accumulative effect on you. This year's Desert Rats event was supposed to be just like the real thing. We are running them like a real mission. We have a timeline, we have Capcoms, we have science back rooms and we are a very high fidelity simulation of a real mission. The test went really well. Mike and the crew emerged from the LER after 14 days. Yeah. The mission was a huge success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can learn more about LER at www.nasa.gov.